my beautiful lovelies it's Emmy how are you it's great to see you and welcome back today I'm going to show you how you can take a rice bag a pet food bag a feed bag and transform it into a very useful grocery bag that is completely reusable and very purposeful I love taking something that would ordinarily go into the trash and transform it into something useful and this is the project so we eat a lot of rice in my family we also have chickens and both rice and chicken feed come in these very very durable bags and i have been collecting them for just this purpose i made my first tote bag out of a rice bag years and years and years ago before i even had children in fact it was about 12 years ago and i actually have the original version it's holding <laughs> shop vac parts it lives in my garage this was the very first version i made of a rice bag repurposed into a tote bag and there were design flaws that i didn't like i found the straps to be too long it didn't sit up by itself it was very tippy and it didn't fold up very nicely and so i finally come up with a design that i am super happy with and here it is it took me 12 years to finally get around to having enough time to <laughs> perfect this design but I am so happy with how it turned out let me show you its features now forgive me if you follow me on Instagram some of this information will be redundant but for those of you that missed that post I am going to repeat it here my favorite feature of this design is that everything folds up flat and tidy just like this and then I have a bag in the trunk of my car a bag of bags and then when I go into the grocery store I just grab that entire bag super simple easy and i find that i don't forget it because i just have a bag of bags that is my routine another feature that i like about this design is that it's freestanding so i just open it up and then i can pack my groceries into it very easily because it stands up by itself also this bag is wide enough i can accommodate a couple cartons of juice it isn't too tall so i'm not tempted to overfill it and the handles are short rather than slinging it over my shoulder i much prefer carrying it like this to bring my groceries in this tote design is very specific for bringing in groceries if you want a bag that you can sling over your shoulder for taking to the beach or something like that or a picnic by all means make the straps longer tailor these bags for your purpose for me these are grocery bags so when i shared this on instagram and facebook so many of you got in touch with me wanting a pattern wanting a tutorial so today i'm going to show you how you can transform bags into bags or you could even use tarps or any kind of rigid strong a plastic you're not putting it in the landfill you're going to be repurposing it for something that you will use so let me show you the process when i made mine i didn't have a template i was just using another bag that i had that i liked the design of i changed the handles a bit because again i wanted this to suit my purpose but when i was thinking about coming up with a template i just said why not use a brown paper bag everyone probably has one or can get their hands on one and this is the perfect dimension for a grocery sack because that's what these are designed for of course this doesn't have a handle but that's easy to make and I also like this height this is a shorter bag if you like a longer style bag there are brown paper bags that are like that so feel free to use that as your template remember this is your bag so make it suit your needs so this is going to be our template. There's no need to print anything out, no need to save a PDF. Just go find yourself a brown paper bag. So I'm gonna make this tutorial as simple as possible and use as few tools as possible. You will need a sewing machine. I suppose you could sew this by hand, but it probably won't be as durable or you could tape the seams potentially with duct tape, but I think if you started putting too many groceries into it, those seams would give way. Although Gorilla Tape might work. So if you try that and it works, please let me know. So you just need a sewing machine. We're just gonna use a straight stitch, no fancy stitches. We don't need any special thread. We're just gonna use cotton thread. I'm gonna be using a pair of scissors. And if you have them, these tools are really useful. You don't need them but they're really great for making straight edges. They're used in quilting. It's a cutting pad and a ruler that looks like this. 
This is really great for making long straight stitches. It's clear, so you can line things up to make sure that the edges are straight. And this, it looks like a pizza cutter, and it is very similar to a pizza cutter, except that it has a very sharp blade. And this is really handy for cutting fabric, especially if you have layers of fabric and with one swipe, you can get a nice clean straight edge. So recommend that if you're doing a lot of sewing. But I'm not gonna be using those because I wanted to show you that you can just use some scissors. First thing we're gonna do is cut out our pattern. It's really simple. We're just gonna take this bag apart. So basically we're just cutting on these seams here. We're gonna separate the panels. We're gonna have five separate panels, one for each side and then one for the bottom. So just cut right along those edges. By the way, if you are interested at all in sewing or creating, this is the perfect project to learn how to sew. I think this would be a great project to do with the kids. It only requires straight stitches. And if the lines are a little bit crooked, it's okay because it's simply a shopping bag. All right, so now that we've cut the seams on all sides and deconstructed this, you can see how we're going to put this together. Now, see this? This is what we have the base, the front panels, and the side panels. And this is how we're going to construct it. We're gonna construct all the panels to the base first and then seam up the sides. So in order to get our pieces measured, we're gonna cut this apart. So those are our three basic shapes. And so you can see, I'll say, I should say front and back. And this is our side panel. And this is the bottom. So for this, we'll need two, and this one will need two. So we're gonna need five panels. We're gonna need two front and backs. We're gonna need two sides, and we're gonna need one bottom. So now that we have our patterns, we're gonna take our bag, now this is a rice bag, really, really strong plastic, kind of woven plastic, very similar to the plastic tarps. So depending on the size of your rice bag, if you have a 25 pound bag, you'll need two. If you have a 50 pound sack, one will be enough. Now we're gonna take our template and measure out our pieces. Another reason why this project is great to do with kids, you don't really have to measure. It's not that fiddly of a project at all. We're just gonna line up our pattern and we're gonna leave about an inch extra at the top. We're gonna to fold that down and that's gonna reinforce the top edge. So we're gonna do that and then we're gonna use a pair of scissors and just cut across. Just like that. Now we have a tube. You could make a bag just like this, but you see how narrow this bag is? You're not gonna be able to fit too much. So we can save this for the base. Now we're gonna separate these two panels and then we're gonna cut right here. Save this little panel here. We're gonna use that for the handles. I'm gonna repeat that on this side. Okay, so that's the front and back. Do the same thing for your side panels as well. Now, some rice bags already reinforced on the top, and in that case, you don't have to give an extra one inch from the top. Just use your template exactly like this. So if it's already folded over like that, just use the pattern exactly like that. Once you've cut out our pieces, we are ready to assemble. Now we're ready to put this together. We have the two front and back panels. We're going to fold over the top edge to reinforce the edge to make it a little bit neater. So we're just gonna take this top edge and I've already used a little Sharpie here to mark an edge right here. I'm gonna fold this over, fold it over, give this a good crease. So we don't need to use an iron or anything, just use a straight edge and really press down on it. And it creates a nice, so then we have that crease. We make sure our two front panels, the front and back panels are the same. 
And now we're going to stitch this edge down right along here. No special seam allowance or anything, just to tack that into place. So years and years and years ago, my mom gifted me a Singer sewing machine. It was a very basic machine that could straight stitch and zigzag stitch, nothing fancy. And I took it with me everywhere. When I moved to college, I had it. When I moved from different apartments, I always had my sewing machine with me. I put it in storage, took it out. Loved that machine, made so many great things with it, but I also hated that machine. <laughs> Invariably, whenever I did a project, it wouldn't have enough oomph. I would break a needle and I would be cursing. And I found myself avoiding projects because I knew that my machine wasn't enough to handle the project. So fast forward many years later, my husband for Christmas last year bought me this new machine. It's a Juki. I absolutely adore it. It makes sewing projects a pleasure and I'm just, so very pleased with it. But give thanks to that old singer. I made a lot of projects with that machine and having that machine makes me appreciate this one all the more. Alrighty, let's put this together. So now we're just gonna do a straight stitch all the way down to hold this seam down. I have got my stitch spacing at four. It's not that important. It doesn't need to be that tight. This is kind of a rough thing that we're doing. So begin sewing. I like to go forward and backward a little bit to hold in the seam. And we're just gonna sew this all the way across. Because people have asked, you don't need any special kind of thread either. I'm just using cotton thread. Okay, keep sewing. And cut. I love this machine, it even cuts the thread for you. So, this is what it looks like at the end. We just sew it all the way across. That's what it looks like on the front. I have white thread on the front. No need to get fancy. Okay, so I'm gonna do that with both of these. Okay, both sides. Ta-da! So, front and back panels are done. So, to create the handles, we're gonna take this little side piece of the rice bag and just fold it up like this. Fold it like that and then fold this side. Then take your straight edge again, fold that down, crease it down. When you crease it, it really helps keep the edge. And then you're going to fold this part up and over that. See that? So that we have a folded edge on this side and a folded edge on this side. So it doesn't kind of abrade our hands while we're holding our bag. See that? So like this and then like this. Crease it down and then we're going to straight stitch that right here so that it holds it in place. Okay, straight stitch that. Just like that. We straight stitch it right along that seam and it holds everything in place. So for short handles, I'm gonna cut a 10 inch length and we need two of those to form our handles. If you want a longer strap, make yours longer. So that's what I have here, 10 inch strap. So here's one I made earlier. I happened to use a zigzag stitch on it. Doesn't make any difference. Straight stitch works just fine. So now we have our two straps, a base and four panels. Now we're going to put this all together. So here's my base. It happens to have a seam down the middle and that's just because that's from the seam from the bag. No big deal. And we're going to attach the four panels to it around the perimeter. So Nancy taught me that we sew with right sides together, meaning the outside of the fabric. Right sides together, we sew our seam. And then when we turn our garment right side out, the seam is on the inside, very neat and tidy. We're going to ignore Nancy this time because we want a bag that lies nice and flat. I found that when you do right sides together and you have the seam on the inside of the bag, your bag doesn't fold down nice and flat. So again, this is a great project for beginners because we can ignore all that. So we've got our base. We're gonna take our side panels, we're gonna put wrong sides together and we're going to sew right here and we don't even have to pin this in place we can just hold it with our hands so i skip about a half an inch so that the corners can meet a little bit easier so i'm going to do that just put our presser foot down and just using our hands to hold this in place 
gonna just sew a straight stitch. So we have this connected to this. Now we're gonna continue it with the other side. Now we have the two sides. Now we're gonna do the front panel. Same thing, we're gonna line up the back now. When I'm sewing, I'm using the fabric and I'm lining it up with the presser foot here. That's the edge of the, and feeding it in as smoothly, as straight as possible. Okay, so now we have the bottom. At the corners, I stop about a half an inch. So I stop right there and I stop right there with about a half inch left. So that when I do my side panels, I can just rotate it and then go all the way up to the top. It'll be clearer once you do it yourself. Now I almost forgot this part. We're going to attach our handles before we sew up the sides of our bag. It's gonna be a lot easier to do this now because everything is flat. Once we have the bag assembled and we're trying to put in the handles, you can totally do it. I've done it. It's just a little noodly. So this is easier to do this now. So now we're gonna take our handles and we just are gonna place them right here. And I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it like this. If you don't want to eyeball it, you can take a ruler and measure. I measure three inches from the side of the bag, put a line three inches from this side, and then I will line up the edge of the handle right there to there. Let me show you this little technique for attaching the handle strap to the bag. So we want our handles to be nice and secure. So first we're gonna create a square. We're gonna go across and down, across again and back up. Then we're gonna go corner, corner and create a diagonal trace that bottom line again, and then go to the opposite corner, creating an X. And that way we'll have a very secure handle. So to do that, we're gonna start here. So we're gonna go down, stop, pivot, and again, stop, short, pivot again. Pivot. Stop. Now we've created a square. Now we're going to go opposite to corner, opposite corner. Stop. Pivot. And retrace that bottom line again. Stop. Pivot. And go opposite corner to opposite corner, creating an X. I like to take a step backwards to kind of tie up a knot to secure the ending there. And then we cut our string. So then now you can see that we created a square or rectangle with an X to secure it. So now we're gonna take the other end of the strap, take it to the line and repeat that on this side. Okay, like that. See, doesn't have to be perfect just want your handle secure. Here we go, the handle. Now you're beginning to see the structure of the bag. So we're gonna repeat this handle step on this panel. Alrighty, so now you can see the bag, can't you? You've got the handles on, and now we're just gonna fold the sides up and then sew along these edges, just like that. Ta-da, isn't it great? So this project will take you maybe an hour or two, but so stinking worth it. I love doing things like this on a rainy day, or just when you wanna feel a little bit accomplished, you have a little project, and then you've got something super functional and something that didn't go into the landfill. So great. I like to line up the top edge so that it's a little bit neater. So line up the top of the bag and just sew right down this edge. Line these two up, sew right down the edge. And just to reinforce the top edge just a little bit, I like to go backwards a couple steps too, just to give it a little more security. And hold the two sides together. And sew along that edge. Periodically slow down, make sure everything is lined up.
And same thing at the bottom. I like to do a little back stitch and forward stitch just to secure things. Okay, there's that edge. Now we have our first corner. I'm going to repeat this for all of the three remaining corners. Alrighty, my lovelies, there we have it. The perfect grocery shopping bag. Love this. We have one more step. We need to crease the seam so that it folds up nice and flat. All we have to do is fold it down how we like it and then use a straight edge and really scratch it and crease those seams nice and flat. And what we're creating are those gussets on the inside of the bag so that it will fold up nice and flat. So there you have it, the perfect shopping bag. So happy about taking something that would ordinarily go into the landfill and repurposing it and using it to make something so very useful. Love, love, love this. One other thing I almost forgot to mention, because I was using rice bags, I didn't have any oily residue or any smells, so I didn't even bother washing my bags out. But if you're using chicken feed or dog food bags, for example, you wanna give this a good soapy wash and then allow the plastic to dry completely before sewing it up and cutting and making up your bag. Otherwise your bags will smell like dog food <laughs> and be kind of greasy. <laughs> Alrighty, my lovers, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Like this video, subscribe, check out my website. I will include a tutorial there as well. And I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. It's an instant Halloween costume, I just need to poke eyes. Oh, okay.